Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Libra God 90 back on another episode from the Survivor Side Story podcast. I am your only host, Libra God 90, running this channel, of course, with my girl Nia. You know, she says hello, not really, right? She's fake. I was gonna keep saying that, right? I wish I had a Nia in real life, I ain't gonna hold you. But anyway, let's get into this. I wanna ask you guys a question, right? What do you guys think now? I think it's been two weeks since his release, the Lich or Vecna, whatever you want to call him, from the Dungeons and Dragons chapter, right? <clears throat> is he OP? Is he like the strongest killer in the game? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think he is, but I will say this. Um, I will make a video on how to counter him, how to because I haven't had that much of an issue in chase with him, but I will tell you this. Obviously, his power, the mage hand or whatever you want to call it, where he can pick up the pallet, he can pick up drop pallet and chase, um, how he can block, um, you know, use the spell to block uh, the pallet to being used um, within four, for four seconds. Uh, and how strong that really is. That's pretty strong to see. Not any killer can do that, but him, he's the only killer that can do that. Uh, he's, not the, he's not that fast of a killer. 4.6 max base speed. Terror radius, base terror radius is 32 meters average, right? He's not a hard killer to really learn and play. Um, he can fly, you know, he can use the, the damn spirit things to shoot at you, which I love that you can crouch and duck under that. Cause there's times you can get caught by that. Like if you vault a window or vault a pallet, he's using it. And sometimes you're like locked in an animation. You can get hit by that. But for the most part, you shouldn't have that much of an issue of dodging those spirits. But I will say that I got to understand and remember, you know, bloodlust kicks in faster since like two years ago, damn near where they pretty much did an overhaul the killer. And it's 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 kind of frustrating i will say that when you're running from him and let's say he is catching up in bloodlust and you all forced to drop the pallet that he can just lift it back up and this is what i try to get a lot of survivors to stop doing i don't believe in pre-dropping just to be pre-dropping i don't believe in just wasting any kind of pallet but i will say you know um stop getting too greedy i'm hearing people with more hours than me and i have 7k hours now like i actually checked with under almost with with almost four years into this game now, four years to be in October or September, one of those that I've been playing DVD, I have seven thousand one hundred eighteen hours. Um, so that means it's not even a full four years I've been playing this game. And I already got seven K, and mostly in Survivor, and that's is insane. So I just had to like I had this guy check uh for me because uh, I'm on PlayStation Four, he's on PlayStation Five, and it's just easier for you to check on PlayStation Five. Say, hey, can you just check my hours? Cause I thought it was like you know what I'm in between. Like I know I had at least five thousand. I was I know I got to have at least six thousand, but I didn't think I was already almost at seven two hundred hours. That's crazy. Uh, but I will say that people with my hours and more, um, you know, there are casual players and there are people who play comp, whatever. I don't want to get into like the comp DVD scene or what I think about it. But I will say I don't feel negative or positive about it. But I will say when people say just be greedy with pallets, I just don't think that you should be that greedy with every killer. I think you should be patient. I think you should play the killer based on the vibe of the match to see if that killer respects pallets. Just like a killer should try to see if the killer, if survivor is going to be smart enough to either pre-drop go around 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 uh maybe try to use resources maybe they hold w maybe they hold forward but it's never good to be greedy i've always said this before like don't just be greedy in life it's never good to just be greedy and so with this killer the reason i think it's an issue is because you have to use pallets now it's not an issue using windows against him although he can use uh in fact, i'm actually about to go back to see his power cast i got the game on right now I just want to go back over to his powers again. You know, you got the mage hand, creates a magical hand. I can lift down pallets and stuff, which I will, I will say this. I will say this. Like today, I went against him and he dropped, like he, I dropped the pallet, he picked it up and I was able to stun him back. So I think that that's not an issue, right? I don't think that's like a issue, but I do think that if you are being too greedy and let's say you drop the pallet on him he lifted up and you keep going around he might be able to catch you because you got to think too if you've been running him for a minute bloodlust will start to kick in so you might want to be careful with that you know um but i do think that it's interesting that he could use that thank god other killers cannot use that see it's not like a perk that you can just teach i just think that you know, with this game, with the way they try to make killers, sometimes it just get boring because he's just so much of a mixture of a lot of killers. Like to me, he reminds me of the Crow Mommy or AKA the artist, or I should say the artist, AKA the Crow Mommy, is that 
you know, like the cringe names that people have in this community is so insane, bro. It's so insane. But like, you know how she can shoot out her birds, or she can, you know, he can shoot out his his his, his ghost or whatever. But you know, obviously with Crow, you know, she, she can set him up and zone y'all better, in my opinion. I do think that because he has so many ways that he can hurt you and chase, that's what make him unique. He also can fly. You know, he can briefly move faster, ignoring vaults and palace and stuff like that. Um, again, uh, Fight of the Dam, Conjures Five, Flying Entities. Again, I do like you can crouch on that. He also can use um, Spelling Sphere, cast a moving invisible sphere that reveals survivors and temporarily disables magic items. And I assume that magic items, you know, refers from like when you're using like mechanic of like the the chest that comes with him. You know, obviously that's his power. That's not gonna obviously appear no, with no other killer but him. But I just think that like he also reminds me a little bit of nurse in a sense and the only reason why i'm saying that and i'm not saying that because obviously you're trying to put him on the same level as no i would never disrespect her like that but that's not putting him down it's just that nurse is just that stupid of a killer it's the fact that like you can obviously use pallets with him but it's just the fact that like with nurse you kind of think like okay why would i want to use pallet with nurse because he could just blink through him but granted you know trying to break line of sight is the best way you play against nurse trying to break line of sight because, you know, the person's playing this have to be able to see you to time their blinks and, their, you know, uh, correctly and stuff. But with him, it's just like, I just think that if you're too greedy with him, I think if you're too greedy, granted, he can pick up a down pallet and catch you. I'm not saying it's always perfect, but I think that you have to be patient in your chases. So in my opinion, I just don't think that he's that OP. But I do think that he is very interesting. I do think that now I didn't really get into his perk. I made a video on him because I quickly did it because, you know, I don't like it was dropped. I want to say tomorrow would be like a, a week ago. I think has he been on a week? I think tomorrow will be a week, which today's Sunday, the 9th. So tomorrow's the 10th. I think he's been on a week uh, tomorrow, which means he has to have been dropped on the 3rd of June. And I just think that like I've never seen this in the time I've been playing DVD. I've never seen um, a chapter release on a Tuesday. So I was able to do that, and then I was able to uh, upload a video that Tuesday the next day on the 11th. So I didn't really get into his perks like that. And to be honest with you, I don't play Killer as much as others. But uh, mind you, I'm just going to read the yellow perks. I'm pretty sure, obviously, you just have to assume that if it's on the third tier, uh, it's going to be more. Does that make sense? He has Dark Arrogance. That's a teachable perk. Uh, Languid Touch, teachable perk. And then there's uh, Weave Attunement. Sorry if I said that wrong. Uh, let's say uh, it says increase the duration. You are blinded by any means in the duration of your palace stuns by 25%. Increases regular vault speed by 15%. Uh, so I just want to make sure I got that. It says increases the duration. You are blinded by any means in the duration of the palace stun. Okay. Again, some things I kind of really don't really. Like I, said, I don't. I have never really played with him. I played against him enough to kind of really understand how to counter him. And, and then it says that when a survivor remains 36 meters of your scarce uh, crow, they gain the exhaust. Yeah. See, this is this is what I don't like about this perk. This is what I don't like. Cause I wonder every time I go against him or even a killer that may be using his teachable, he says when a survivor within 36 meters of you scares a crow. So that means if I'm not even that far from him, but a crow is near me, let's say I'm using balance landing and I scare a crow and he's right near me. So that, that's why sometimes I'd be forgetting that I have balance landing or I'm like, why am I exhausted? Because I'm not reading these perks. So that's why it's good to like either play killer or it's good to either see what's going on. Fortunately enough for me, I've been able to play against most killers and play with a lot of killers to understand how to move against killer, but they still have different perks. So, uh, but yeah, it has, uh, this perk has a uh, 20 second cooldown, but you basically, basically get exhausted. That, that, that's actually a pretty good perk for Chase. That's not bad because you're always going to scare a crow and I just think that that could be very annoying because it's like, you know, if you're caught in a dead zone, but then there's like a TNL wall and there's a window, you scare a crow away, but you got life, you're just going to get caught, especially if you're already injured, right? Or you're going to get a free hit. Because if you scale crow away, you get exhausted. So it's like, and if you forget that that perk exists because it's not a popular perk. You know, people like to go for meta in DBD. People like to go for what is, you know, safe for them to win. And because, you know, this game is centered around um, kills and escapes between killer and survivor, people are just looking to s slow down the gens and, um, you know, healing, slow down the healing and all that other kind of stuff, right? Lethal Basur, you know, or reading, this is all they pretty much use. So I don't know if this is gonna be all that popular. And then there's the Weave Attunement. When an item becomes depleted for the first time it is dropped, you see the aura of the dropped items. Okay, survivors within 12 meters of dropped items have their auras revealed to you. When a survivor picks up an, 
survivor item they suffer the oblivious status effect for 26. See, that's just a we okay. I, see, for the or read, not understand, and it can catch them off guard. And you gotta think, first off, again, this is only on the first tier, so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be even you know more meters you can use or see the dropped items. But a lot of survivors like to use flashlights, they like to use med kits, so I can see somebody getting value out of that. What I like to see though is people using different stuff. Like, you know how killers, and it's so funny to me how killers do this, right? It's so funny to me how killers would be like, man, I just wish survivors used different killers and different perks and different stuff. I mean, different killers. I'm sorry. I wish survivors used different perks and items and stuff like that instead of using the same thing, same meta. But we get tired of seeing the same killers. I don't know if I said it. I'm going to say it again. Uh, this killer has been, obviously, it's a newer, it's a newer killer. So you have to understand that any newer killer that's just been released within a week or two or maybe even a month is going to constantly be used number one. That's not saying that they're the number one killer in the game as far as strength wise, but it's just, you know, uh, number one pick because people are still trying to learn. They're trying to get good with them. Maybe comp players trying to scrim with them, trying to see if this is even a comp killer they should use, etc. So uh, pick rate right now, uh, he's the number one killer uh, that people are using. He is picked at 7.70%. Kill rate is at 69.40%. Um, and I want to say 43% uh, of the time, uh, he gets like a 4K. So, yeah, he's one of those. Um, yeah, he, uh, he, he definitely. He, cause, because the thing is, I want people to understand this too. And I try to get people to get this right. I feel bad for the people who started playing after two years ago. Like in 2022 of June or July. That's when they did the that overhaul. This was right before they did the Prestige 100 system. Well, I think this was in the beginning of that, where they did the entire system, where they nerfed Survivor uh, after they get hit, and they buff killers. You know, they were able to uh, recover faster because DVD is a game that it takes so much understanding. It takes so much time, and I don't care how many hours you think you, or how many hours you do have. If you think that you can't learn anything else in this game, you are incorrect. There are so much that you need to understand in this game. And I just think that the devs did survivors a disservice by just nerfing the hell out of survivors and making it the way it is. I really do believe in this because I want people to understand like, yeah, you got windows of opportunity. People use crutches and stuff like that, which hell, even in comps, I don't want to hear no more about people saying you are a noob survivor by using Windows Opportunity, by the way. Even people with my kind of hours and above or, or way less than me use Windows Opportunity, especially if you're playing in solo queue. Because if you know how to, listen, all, all it does is it gives you an opportunity. It shows you where things are. And I understand, yes, the part of the element in Chase is you're not understanding or not supposed to know where things are. You're supposed to guess or try to figure it out. But let's just keep it a thousand. In this game, we don't go by that, bro. We just don't go by that. We really do not go by any of that. We go by people in this game when they like they get hooked on DVD, and I see a lot of newer players, and I love. And I'm not trying to get off on a tangent on this killer. I just want, I just want to say this. I love when there are newer baby killer and survivors who got like 500 hours, 100 hours, a thousand and five hundred, fifteen hundred hours, even even two K hours. I love, I don't, I don't like the ego. I don't like that you think you can't learn anything. But I love how proud they are when they have a clip. I love how proud and happy they are when they finally trying to figure out how to do a flashlight save, a flashbang. I am very proud of that because it really shows that DVD is one of those games that people just really enjoy and they just want to try to get good at it. This game is a party game. Keep that in mind. I didn't understand that in the beginning when I was playing this. I was like, why is it a party game? I'm so hooked on trying to get good. This game is a party game with all invited guests. This game is not meant to be balanced. It's not meant, and you have to give devs credit. They're doing their best to try to please to everybody that they can on both sides. Because they know that the people who keep this game running are the people who buy and play this game and buy, you know, the skins and all of these things. But this game is not meant for that. And... You know, I'm watching this comp DVD thing and, you know, I'm watching, you know, the latter 1v1 of some of the best survivor and comp of all time playing against each other. And very interesting things, by the way. I mean, a lot of them, I will say I have more hours than some of them have more hours than me. 
Uh, but you got to understand, like I said, I racked up in some hours in some very short time. But they were doing things that I normally would do. They were doing things that I was like, hmm, that's pretty interesting. I love learning about this game. I've loved learning about how to get better. Because even when I was at lower hours, at like 2,000 hours, to even 3,000 hours, I thought I couldn't get any better. I thought I was him. And hell, there may still be things I may have. Like, I, I would just, I'm just going to say this, by the way. I'm never joining comp. Comp is filled with a bunch of kids. No disrespect to them. It's just what it is. They may have some adults. But I'm 33 years old. I work a full-time job. I got 85 hours of pay time off. I never really use my PTO. I never missed a shift in almost two years. I don't have time for that. I'm not getting... I'm doing my YouTube thing. I like doing my podcast for those who like to listen. This is, And I try... I, I really want this to... Because listen, this is a niche in DVD. You don't see too many people doing podcasts. People stream. People do video. How to video. How to do this. Whatever. Then they argue all on Twitter. I'm doing something that's very unique, but people seem to love it, and it's very convenient. So I would love it if people could smash that like button so I can get, so I can get that validation and know that you guys really enjoy these so I can continue to do them. But I guess what I'm saying is, is that overall, I don't have time to dedicate that anymore. Hell, even when I was going for partner, I, I, I couldn't... I didn't have a job at the time. I left my job, but I had money. I was with family. I'm, anybody who knows me, I say the same thing all the time. But I'm gl- I'm so blessed. There, there was there's something about that grind. And mind you, I can go back to the first day. I'm like, okay, I'm home now. I gotta really grind. I had all the time in the world to figure out how to get partner, how to get more subs, all of that. And I did it for eight months, bro. Literally eight months. Until unfortunate things happened. Had to leave. Had to start over. But then I let my fans know, hey. I'm going to be back. It's not the end. You know, I was walking every day, 30 minutes in the snow. I was, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I said, I'm going to upload. I'm going to let my people know because I couldn't use internet when I was at. You know, I just could not. But look where I'm at now. You know what I mean? So you just never give up. And mind you, I had my channel for almost six years, man. That prestige 100 grind, all of that stuff helped me get there. But I got my first check in almost six years. So I tell people, like, I don't have, I mean, I'm doing what I love doing, but I still have to work and produce. Does that make sense? I still have to do what I have to do to take care of business, right? So I can have stuff to do, but I don't have time to join a comp scene to prove a point. I don't, I don't, I'm not a comp killer. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm at least a comp, comp survivor. I can, I mean, and and I'm, and I'm, I'm saying that respectfully, respectively. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I see too many. It's like, dude, I got almost, (laughs) I got almost 8,000. I mean, Literally, I'm like 900 away. Not that I'm counting, but literally, like, and when you all, I mean, all you do is play something in one way. Like I said, I can't play killer. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, I will lose to a pub killer easy. A pub, any pub killer is better than me. I don't play killer, but survivor, there's nothing I have not done. Check spots. I know all of my. I know there's nothing you can do. Okay, and anybody who watch my content, they know like they literally know but it's fine my whole point is is this right is that you know i just think that with it like when they release killers like this and when they make killers that's so boring it's like they keep trying to find ways to just make it where killer killers have complete domination complete domination i'm talking about straight up it's boring it's whatever and like i said everybody has that kind of time to try to figure it out and spend times and hundreds of hours in scrim matches in practice mode everybody has that but i think that there's nothing wrong with wanting to learn how to counter that if you actually have that cool i used to do that in the very beginning like in the very beginning i used to always do that i used to say you know what i want to get good at this game i want to know how to flashlight save i want to know how to do you know all this x y and z and i had people who were better than me who were more experienced not everybody was patient that's the thing about this community too is that like when you try to reach out for help you got people who are just so used to just talking down on people and granted you, you gotta expect that you got a bunch of kids teenagers who play this game and they swear this is like the greatest thing on earth and then you got people who just don't want to help or they just don't have time and I, and, I, and i try to create videos as much as i can because i remember being like that and i remember having people um a couple people try to show me the way and then but i've dealt with a lot of ego so i don't i'm not an egotistical person you know i try to help people as much as i can if you have any questions just bet you know just go to the dbd ransom tips 
uh, po- listen to the podcast episodes. That I do have some videos on, like I said, going against Vecna. But I do probably tomorrow, and I might even uh, release it tomorrow. So I might release this tonight for those who are members. Only a couple of members, you know. And then I might try to do that on how to counter against Vector, Vector, uh, Vecna. But overall, I just think that this killer is. It can be annoying. It can be annoying. It can be. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the way this game is designed, I just don't think this game is meant for you to... I think survivors and killers made it about more skill than what the devs intended it to be. And that, and I think a lot of people just can't get past that. Like, they just can't... Like, I'm going to kind of ramble a bit, right? So if you're busy, just listen. If you're at work, if you, you know, if you, you know, sleeping or whatever, if you're just driving... Uh, and I hope this Brad Gown music, and even if I don't get, I'm gonna use this um, chill beat. It might be copyright. I don't care. It just sound. It's, it's gonna be really smooth. So I'm, I'm gonna use it anyway. Uh, if it's like a split advertising, cool. You know, you don't make a lot of money on advertising like that anyway on, on YouTube. It's really like the promotions and stuff. So one day, hopefully, I'm trying to get all of that and stuff like that. But like, I mean, I don't know. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching stuff and people talking about like the comp scene and I, and I respect it heavily i respect the fact that there are people who dedicate time into something figuring out something text you know mind games i mean like people think shack is very safe but against a good killer shack isn't but against a good survivor shack is very safe does that make sense like if you are a normal average player shack can be safe for the most part against a pub killer or a killer who are casual but the mind games, or, or and sometimes even against certain killers, is not like like going against the demogorgon that can automatically greet and hit you through the, the through the window vault. You know, I would say unless you have shack, unless you have like a generator in shack, and you can try to mind game and fake like you about to take the window and then you kind of curve around. See, this is an elite mindset mind game that I'm talking about. Well, like there's times I hate when there's a generator in shack. There's times I hate that, but then there's times it's like it depends on the killer. Like, if I'm going against a Huntress or a Demogorgon, I need that to separate that barrier because I don't care how much you're greeting, you know, Demogorgon's leap and hitbox and Huntress' hitbox is so dumb that even if you make the right play, you can still get hit. Versus if you go against, like, another killer and you don't, you, you play, like, let's say, like, a Myers or whatever, right? You can pretty much use Shaq almost all day before you have to drop it. And you probably don't necessarily need to have that barrier with, like, a generator right there and stuff like that. I know it's kind of hard to think about, but it's just, like, the mind games you can do. Checking inside certain cracks inside Shaq, uh, you know, looking through wall holes in the walls or whatever. Uh, looking at jungle gems, the TNL wall. Like, these are things that, like... You know, it takes time and craft to understand. I've watched a lot of good players use this method. And, you know, and it's so insane. Like the things you do, crouching against the Demogorgon, crouching. Like, these are things that I have done and I know how to do. But it took me a lot of practice and learning. Okay? And I don't have low hours until again. I have a lot of hours. And I main survivor. So it's like, these are things that I know how to do. But I've been there in that situation where, hey, I was brand new just like everybody else. But like I said, when it comes to like the comp scene and what they do, I just think in a game, like like a game that's balanced you can play against is like let's say NBA 2K, Madden or Valorant, whatever, where it's like everybody on both sides has enough to do with what they need to do to compete. It's just about having hours into the game. Maybe let's say I have 1,500 hours in Madden, but you only got like 50 hours, 100 hours. Right, the things that I know how to do within the game and you know how to whatever is both all all things being equal on both sides, it's the same. However, in, in, in the hours separate, the experience separate. Does that make sense? You still have a shot, but I have that experience. And DBD is the same thing when it comes to the hours. Me having like seven K hours versus somebody who have like you know, a, a, a thousand hours as killer or even as survivor trying to keep up with me and chase. They may not understand how many, bro, years. It ain't been that long, though. It's been almost four years now. Keep that in mind. Okay, it's not like I've been playing since beta. But the hours and, you know, understand that there are newer things to know how to mind game. It is unfair. I, I went up against a streamer today, man. He was a bubba. And I love going against a bubba. We all love a good bubba, right? <laughs> we all love a good, a good bubba. But it's like... Oh, 
man, it was just like it wasn't boring. I love a good chase, but it's just it was just like, what did he want? Like 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 expect what? Like what, like what was he gonna do? Especially I was in the area crow. Like what like what the hell was he gonna do? I mean, he chased me. It was just like yo. Like, I knew where, you know, what I'm, like, you know what I'm saying? Versus, but then here's the thing. But see, here's the kick, though. He was able to kill everybody else. I think two of us escaped. No, I think, I think three of us escaped. I don't know. But for the most part, killers at least get a 2K for the most part. Even if you're a bad killer, you still get a 2K. Because even if you are a bad killer, you got to understand there are survivors who are even worse. Survive, learning how to loop in mind game, I will argue this forever, is the hardest thing in this game. It is the hardest thing in this game. You cannot lie, boy. It is literally the hardest thing in this game. Oh my God. I don't care what anyone is saying to you. I don't care about a killer. I, now this not to take away from killer, right? This not taking away from that. But I want y'all to understand. There are so, oh my God. Y'all just don't, bro. You can ask anybody. In, in this game who plays this game on a consistent basis and, but they're trying to learn there, bro there was a time I was trying to like literally I was getting discouraged bro I was like bro there was a time I almost quit DBD cause I'm like bro how do I run from this wraith how do I get to iridescent one rank one whatever like how do I do that you know still thinking that rank means something like I'm watching a guy he, like, he's actually one of my favorite YouTubers of DBD to, killers to watch cause he's funny as hell but it's like, you know, he got like $1,500. He was just like, you know, he's the Trapper main and P100. You know, haven't been playing the game that long, you can tell. And he was just like, yeah, I'm so, <sighs> I'm so tired, goddamn. He was just like, you know, rank one Trapper. You know, I thought that was cool, man. Like, you know, I'm not going to hate on him for that. But we all know who knows the game for real. Like, there's people who know the game for real, but, they, but we really know for real. That rank doesn't mean anything. There's no real, there's like, like, there's no real rank. You know what I mean? But, like, I just love that he's, like, you know, excited about that, right? I love that he's had that competitive nature because you need people to want to be competitive to keep this game going. Yeah, there's people who want to, like, F off and just play for, you know, for fake whatever. They want to, you know, play the guitar. You know, I love using his killer. Like, sometimes I'll stop and play the guitar. You know, that new perk from the new survivors and stuff from the latest chapter. But I'm just, like, there are people who just, they just don't know what they're doing in Chase, they don't look behind them. They're trying to run. You shouldn't get upset with them as they are just new to the game. Okay, who is bothering me? I'm literally doing a video. Uh, like, okay, who's bothering me? Damn, it's already 10 o'clock. That's crazy. But like, bro, loop, mind gaming, chaining loops. Do y'all not, like, pe people, uh, listen, as killer, you chase, you should play both sides. If you're trying to get good at both sides, if you're trying to get good at one thing, play both sides. If you're trying to get good at killer, get good at killer. If you're trying to get good at survivor, play killer. Whatever, right? Play killer, play survivor, vice versa. But I'm telling y'all, okay? Now listen to me. Survivor make more... It, it's easier for you to win as killer, not just the fact that they buff killer. It's easier for you to win as killer because so many survivors make so many mistakes and, and again i know this is a party game it's meant to be hide and seek this is what the devs intended what we expected out of this game is not what it was what it's not what it was made for but it is like the things i watch survivors do if i have bond i'm gonna tell you exactly what they do they drop the pallet because killer coming the killer respects go on the other side survivor panic vaults and then they go then, and then the killer baited and go on the other side and they panic vault, vault again because they got baited and they go down in like literally 11 seconds in the chase if not maybe less not even enough to have bloodlust they get hit you know they don't get more distance anymore right since they overhaul you know nerf the survivor and stuff right like these are the things that happens and it's just like well okay it's, you know I, I don't know man I, 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 listen I just feel bad for survivors these days man like for me, it's just like no, like, like I said, I know I'm at the high MMR. I understand that, but I play, I play against some very good killers in the time I played this game. And there's things that they would do, like mind game. Like for example, there's, like there's a killer that I would do, like I think the side will go right. If you go into shack and you're surviving, mean, you're going against an experienced killer. What they'll do is, let's say you go into the shack where there's like the pallet, not where the door across from the pallet, but let's say there's like a pallet that you're entering in shack. So the pallet is right there, so you can drop it if the killer's chasing you from behind. 
a lot of killers probably would, like wait and try to get like you know because they don't want to get stunned so they'll respect it and they'll assume you're gonna drop it right so a lot of time or so like a lot of time they'll like either get stunned break it because you want to get rid of that palette you did you want to get rid of all god palettes you know filler palettes they'll just have around the map but god palettes you want to really get rid of especially very strong palette like a shack but an experienced killer what i see them do too is let's say you run inside shack and killer knows that you're not looking behind you and let's say you drop the pallet what they'll do is they'll go like they'll moonwalk to hide their red stain so that way you don't see them right because you know the best way to track a killer is to see the red stain that's why you want to always be looking behind you in your chases you always want to track the killer and if, if you lose sight of them you want to sort of have an idea of where they could be so that way they don't catch you off guard right and that's where the check spots come in that's when looking you know trying to see if there's any angle you can see or you can hide yourself it's any angle you can try to do but let's say you run into shack and there's a pallet right in front of you and then there's like the window upright what they'll do is let's say they're running behind you and you go inside shack you drop the pallet but you don't stun them a lot of good killers, what they'll do is they'll hide their red stain and then they'll just vault the window inside. So think about it. The pallet is already dropped. So if you're not paying attention fast enough and they already vaulted that window, it takes time to just vault that long pallet. It takes time to just vault it. And that's when they can just catch up guard and just hit you. So to make a long story short, you run inside shack, you pre-drop, but you're not looking behind you. Right, so then the killer hides the wrist and if they're good, if they know what they're doing, if they have an anticipation that you're gonna likely do that. If you play killer long enough and you, you see Shaq, you know a lot of survivors are gonna pre-drop Shaq. So then you drop the Shaq, you know, and then you hide your wrist stain, you vault the window inside Shaq, and you catch him off guard. I have killers trying doing this against me, but with somebody with my kind of hours and I look behind me all the time, I'm always expecting stuff like that. So if I am able to get the shack, let's say I'm about to go down, and usually I would drop shack if I'm about to go down, or it's the killer that's like, I don't think I don't think you should, you should take unnecessary hits, just because you're trying to be too greedy. Cause see, that's being greedy with unnecessariness. Meaning I'm being greedy and I'm taking a hit I didn't have to take because I want to preserve a pal. I get it; some pals are worth keeping, but if you don't have to go down and, you, and your team really needs you and they don't need you in with that early stage hook, sometimes it's nice to just play safe, all right? But um, I have killers doing that, right? Like, they'll think I'm not looking behind me or they think I'm not paying attention. So I'll have a killer literally, I'll drop the pallet, I'm inside Shaq, and they hide their wrist and I see them. But mind you, I'm looking behind already to see where they could be. I'm checking my check spots. And they'll vault inside, but I'm already gone and I already vaulted the pallet. See, I'm, I'm, again, there's not too many things you're going to do, or if any, that I haven't seen, right? But understand, those things had to happen to me for me to counter it sometimes you have to take your l's to understand that you see and see with vecna as the killer he can vault right inside because he can fly in which i like i like that ability and i think you can see his aura too like anytime he's flying it's like i don't know it's like i see the aura or whatever or whatever I, I don't know but i just think that's very interesting you know so for me i don't know i, I just i just want to close it with this i don't want to keep this too long i just think that um and i do want to do a video on like how to you know counter him for the most part it just takes time if you're not listen first i'm gonna just tell you this right now if you're new to the game nothing what i'm telling you is gonna really help you because most killers you're gonna probably struggle with if you don't know how to loop in general and then some killers gonna go against us that's on the s tier level that like you know like some like there's, there's people that say billy's on s tier because of this curve and you know obviously nerves and blight and all this the spirit still gets on my nerves because it's just her unpredictability I will say this first have really good headphones you have to invest in really good it really helps you in this game in this dumb game to have really good earphones because with spirit with other killers that you really need like auditory you know you know listening to be able to like hear where they're coming from you know you don't know if they can be coming from left they can be coming from right that really helps you and have a better advantage. That's why people be like, oh man, that survivor or that killer must have really good ear, um, headphones. You really need to invest in that. I have turtle beats, like a hundred bucks, you know, some, you know, you know, lightweight money, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I ain't got kids, so you know, that's nothing. But I needed that, right? Invest in that so that way you can be able to hear. But you need practice as survivor, okay? You need practice. And. Forget about the comp scene. Forget about trying to do the fancy stuff. Just practice running killer. 
Yeah, I've said this time and time again. Get into a lobby. If you have friends, I see. I hate that they don't do this with survivors. I know it's not gonna help, but I think that they should still have like a bot killer for survivors to run from, just like they have bot survivors for killers for practice. That's how you know that they care more about killers' improvement and winning than they do survivors. Just that alone, that we don't even have that in our uh, arsenal to be able to practice. But I think that that's what you should have because it only makes sense. Practice running killer. You can, again, people get on people with Windows. I use Windows not all the time, but I use Windows and I have no shame in it. I watch people use Windows all the time. They're killer mains, they're survivor mains with comp player, 1,000, 6,000, 7,000, 3,000, 2,000, 12,000 hours. I see them use it. Okay. Um, but because I, I will say this with Windows, it doesn't save you necessarily against a good killer. It doesn't. Um, all Windows, and I will say this again. All Windows um, does is have have you see an opportunity, um, you know, to see where things are. The, the negative thing about Windows is, well, one A, or one I should say, uh, something that may look like a appear like a pallet from the distance could just be a breakable door, and by you pathing to that, uh, you can run into something and just die. Uh, another could um, be where it looks like uh, there's an available window by a TNL wall, but because you see it from a distance, it looks like it's available, but it's actually on the other side. So you could run into it. Sometimes if you're, if you're running from a killer, um, that yellow can actually get in your way and obscure your vision because uh, of the whole tile, because you just see like this yellow illuminating, you know, palette, and it can blind you, or sometimes you can make a mistake and chase. So I will say that, but other than that, uh, it's really good to be able to see where things are, especially if you're playing in pub matches and solo queue. Um, not everyone has, you know, call outs or not everyone's in a, a four man. I play alone. So there's times I like being able to see it, especially if you're trying to like learn a new map. And here's another thing, too, I just want to say before I end this because it's been long already. When I was watching these tournaments, I was trying to get people to understand like RNG is the thing. I, I don't want people, I want people to understand this. I'm not saying that RNG is a complete reason why you lose or win a game. But I'm watching like, you know, these 1v1 tournaments and there will be um, survivors running. They say, okay, like one of them was playing in uh, uh, um, uh, Auto Haven or whatever, or Wreckers Yard. And like they would go to the same exact map, but you got to understand, you know, this is how you know that devs is not main, is not trying to have this game be a competitive game like that. Is that the maps are not the same. Okay, you're playing in 1v1s. There's all the pallets, you know, are available to you. No one used them, only but you and that killer that's trying to, uh, that, that, that you're running from. But understand that, okay, if I play, you know, 1v1 and I get this, a certain version of that same map where let's say, okay, there's Shaq because they always start off in Shaq in 1v1s, right, in Chase. They always start off in Shaq. A lot of people like to pre-drop the pallet, whatever. Some people get greedy. Some people try to play safer. But you'll have, like, let's say there's Shaq and then, like, you know, what I like to do even if I'm playing in pub matches and if I don't have windows, I like to look around to see if I'm doing if I'm doing a generator. I like to look around the map, the map to see if I'm doing a gen, what's the next or nearest pallet I can use, right? And you want to do that because it it gives you a path. Like if you don't have windows, you want to see what's all around you. So when a killer chases you, you don't waste time looking. So you know you want to scout the map around a bit, not all around. Get on a gen. That's your first main priority if you're playing pub matches in general, right? Get on a gen, and then if you see a gen, look around and see what's around you. So that way you're not just guessing where things are. So that's a pro tip. But if I'm, you know, in shack, and let's say there's like a truck, and there's a pallet. Okay, I can path around that. I can. I'm, I may not even drop shack pallet. I might take the window. I might run around uh, the truck where there's a pallet, and then run back in the side shack. And I like to connect my loops. As you get older and more experienced in this game, you'll start to see how to connect and preserve certain pallets. And mind game. Mind game is so such a beautiful thing in this game because you're. It's, it's just you know it's a challenge. It's a dance between you and the killer, right? But then let's say if I beat you and let's say my minute in chase is like three minutes because I had good map RNG. I had Shaq that connected to this truck with a pallet and then there's this tree and then it has a good pallet. Well, let's say you play me next and I'm your killer and we're starting off in Shaq, same map, 
but then there's nothing around there's no truck there's like a pallet behind shack but it leads into a dead zone and now you got to work extra harder to get there and then you go down and i'm just i'm just saying it happens where you just go down and then now you die okay you might get two minutes you can't ignore that that is a possibility in the game and that could be a factor you just can't ignore that so you know it's just so it, it's not in outside of the arbitrary rules outside of like i saw a hint say well hey if the map was always the same well it would be boring and people wouldn't want to watch that but that's not the point of it the point of it is it's rng you can't control that even when you're trying to control this and i respect the dvd community uh, who does attorneys I respect them for doing what they do uh, only playing certain killers and limited you know items and perks and what's banned and what's not allowed but the one thing they cannot control even when they choose the maps for certain killers and survivors are the RNG of the map you don't control what you get that means what I'm saying is if I can last if I have a shot and we're both great survivors you have same amount of hours or close if we have thousands but I have a shack that we all start off at and then there's a truck and there's just a lot of paths and pallets i can mind game around i can book it on back to shack if you don't have that that's not you know like i know this is a different topic for another day but i'm just saying like it's just i don't know i just i respect it i respect it i respect people taking the game seriously and having something that they believe in and they have fun with because sometimes playing dvd pubs can make it where you just feel like man you know but um, that's going to end it. These run times usually around 40 minutes. So I'll try to keep it around there. Uh, I love doing these. Like I said, I, I, I do hope that. But like what I might do is pay for, like do it like a pay promotion one day to, uh, like, you know, if I want to spend money on it just to get some um, thoughts and, you know, on these type of topics. But I love doing these. I'm not trying to be lazy doing these audios. It's just. There's people who literally tell me, hey, I love I love listening to these because I'd be busy. I'd be at work. I'd be bored. And guess what? Let's say, you know, it's slow at your job like it is mine. I mean, listening to like a 40 minute, 50 minute, maybe an hour, um, you know, based podcast episode from the Survive Side Stories. Right. Uh, can help your day go by faster. Maybe you're cleaning. Maybe you're cooking. You know what I mean? So maybe you get in jumped. Like, who knows? Like, I don't know your life. <laughs> right. You might have a wife. No, let me stop. But seriously, man, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, I'm just chilling at the crib, man. Just trying to forget about life for a bit. And just being with my guys. That's all it's about. Like, this is a family right here, you know? So, and if, you ha if you're if you new, you want to join the, you know, uh, membership program. You know, I have it where those who are members can get access to, you know, shout out to Katana and Nell Bob, of course, for being the two members. Uh, if you're not a member, that's fine. Don't You don't, you don't have to ever pay me. You don't ever have to pay me. It'd be nice. I mean, I ain't gonna turn off free money, but like, you don't have to ever pay me. You know, you listening and you know tuning into the videos. All I hope that you do is just like the video and subscribe. That's it. If you like, if you don't like, I understand. Just be respectful in the comments if you disagree. But I do have a membership of four ninety nine a month. You get access to you know exclusive videos or like you know videos, update videos. I ain't gonna say exclusive yet because I don't have like, any video that's just for a person. But you know, updated videos. Um, um, first and then you also get like chat emojis and stuff like that you know the cat nia me laughing you know all that stuff um you know priority chat you know all that stuff so you get that and you also get membership uh badges you know next to your name for how long you've been a dedicated member so um yeah that's and yeah that's it man that's all i'm doing but to make a long story short uh, i will try to upload a video on how to counter Vecna have pretty good chases against him and you know I'm not going against the best Vecna in the world I get that but you know um, I think that I have, I'm an experienced survivor I think that you can learn a little bit from me uh, you know or maybe for someone else but at least give me a shot so I will say that but hey, if nothing else hope you guys have a good Sunday night hope you guys enjoying yourself and being safe out here all you can do is just be safe and try your best every day to keep grinding that's all you can do but if nothing else as always stay blessed stay safe out here and if nothing else, peace.